something amazing just happened because the last two games that I just played on chess.com, I had pigs on the seventh. Now, if you've never heard of that, it just means you have both of your rooks on your opponent's seventh rank, or if you're playing as black, it would be on the second rank. This was the game I was playing with white. The very next game I was playing with black, I managed to do it again. Now, that in and of itself is pretty crazy because this is not something that happens all the time. But what's even cooler is I got brilliant checkmates on both of these games because of the pigs on the seventh. So we're gonna use this as a lesson uh, of what you wanna be thinking about if you are able to ever achieve this. And some people never really make an effort to do this. So hopefully after you watch this video, you're gonna understand why this is so valuable. And if you can achieve this, it's, it's gonna be a great thing for you, okay? So we're gonna save this game for last because it had the more epic conclusion in my opinion. And we're gonna talk about this one, which was a shorter game. Let's go ahead very briefly and see how we ended up here. And we're gonna primarily focus on the pigs on the seventh. So F4, I played E5. This is how I like to get into aggressive position right away against F4, just gambit upon. And the, the, one of the primary reasons is white has to be very careful because the bishop is here. If you're able to play queen here, for example, if they play a bad move like knight C3, it's already checkmate because the bishop is here, right? So you could see how dangerous it is for white if they play the wrong move, okay? Now, they usually will play knight f3, which stops this, but it's something that you just kind of constantly are on the lookout for, okay? So then we just go ahead and develop some pieces, and I put the queen on e7. The reason I didn't castle right away and put the queen here first is because I wanted to castle this way so that this rook is involved right away, my queen's involved, and then this guy can come to the e-file, okay? Here we go. Here we go, and I'm setting up for some tactics here. Notice... Whenever you see undefended pieces, a lot of times that's a signal that there could be some tactics lurking in the position. And if you guys would like to pause, what do you think the best move is here for black? You had a chance to look at that. The move is knight takes e4. Now, what's interesting here is you might have been thinking, all right, you take here, you take here, and then bam, you hit him with the check, and bam, you get the queen, right? That makes sense, but there is a problem. So before I show you guys, I would like you to use this as an opportunity to learn what is the problem with knight takes e4 takes, sack the bishop to win the queen. What is the problem with that logic? All right, well, if you had a chance to look at that, by the way, I did play knight takes e4, but I didn't take here, and here's why. Because after the check, white's gonna take with the knight, and when I take the queen, they're gonna throw in this move with a check, and yes, I can block, but they're still gonna get my, my rook. And what happens, if you look carefully, rook, knight, rook, knight, white has one, two, three pieces for my queen, which generally speaking is gonna be better for white. Now, Stockfish says it's pretty equal, probably because white's king isn't totally safe, but this is gonna be a much harder game for me to, to win. Probably I would lose this, honestly, because practically speaking, these three pieces are better than the queen. So I wanted to avoid that line, so instead of sacking here, going back to the hanging piece here, I took on e4. And notice, because of my battery, I'm actually attacking the bishop as well as the bishop behind. For example, if they just move, boom, I'm coming in. And if they don't move, well, I'm just going to take it. And you can't defend it with a knight or a rook, so what are you going to do if you defend it this way again and just take it, right? So that's the problem for white, okay? They played bishop d4, which, like I mentioned, allows me to just trade. And I have one rook already on the second rank here, which is great. Notice how I have lots of targets, but you're gonna see as the game went on how I ended up to, ended up getting both rooks down there, okay? So bishop takes here, and basically what I was trying to do here is I wanted to take this pawn, but I wanted to do it in a way that prevented white from developing their pieces. So for example, if I take this now, it could probably just develop because it's defended here, and then the other rook gets involved, and you know, the game goes on. But what I noticed is that if I trade this guy first, white doesn't want to take here because it allows me to, to capture this way. They're gonna take with the rook, which he did. And now I take this, look at the knight. You can't go there anymore, you don't. You no longer have it defended. I would just take the, the knight. You can't go here, or I just take it. So what do you do? This is a big problem for white, not being able to develop these two pieces, right? So you can see why I threw in that trade. You know, a lot of times I say don't trade unless you have a specific reason to do so. Guess what? I had a specific reason. That's that's why I traded, right? I'm not just trading to trade. I'm trading because I want to trap the knight, okay? So we do that, and 
White plays c4, unleashing the bishop here. Oh, there's a mate in 13. I didn't realize that there was a mate. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, I missed the move here. So bishop c5, apparently, and, and it's over for white, which is interesting. Um, oh, yeah, because what do you do? If you go here, then we have checkmate. Wow, yeah, I totally missed that in the game. And if you go here, also going to be checkmate. Wow, okay. Anyway, I, yeah, I totally wasn't thinking about this diagonal, so I played bishop here instead. I was thinking about defending my rook and also forcing a trade so that my knight could jump in. But yeah, missed, missed an opportunity there. Okay, rook goes back. I captured the pawn. And on knight to c3, notice the knight can't go here. You can't go here. You have to go to c3. But what does it do? It opens up pigs on the seventh. That's exactly what I did. And this is always super dangerous for a couple of reasons. Number one, usually the king is on the first rank. I mean, unless you're playing somebody crazy who's like been moving their king out to where the king's like somewhere out here, the king is going to be either on like G1 or B1 or maybe C1 or H1. Right? It's going to be on one of these squares. So when you get the two rooks there, it's incredibly dangerous for the king. For example, if white just tries to do this, guess what? This is checkmate. Just like that. And so white has to be really careful. So let's see what happened in the game. My opponent played rook takes here, and they're trying to open up a space for their king, right? So that it's not checkmate the way that I just showed you. The king can escape. However, check, king goes here. What did I play next? If you had a chance to look at that, the move is knight to e3, check. And guess what? The king has to go here, only move. My opponent resigned, by the way. Um, and then guess what? Here we go, check. Rook comes down, checkmate. Look at that. So this time, I had not only the pigs on the 7th, I also had the knight coming in to assist. And that's the thing about pigs on the 7th. If you even have one other piece that can help you, you're, you know, a lot of times you can get checkmate, right? So pretty cool, good example of how dangerous it is. Now, let's jump over to this game. And again, I'll show you very, very quickly how we ended up here. But primarily, we're going to focus on this position, which is a bit more tricky because black has this pawn which is pushing and there's no knight to help me right so let's take a look at how this went so we had a sicilian i played bishop e5 check castled and a lot of times when they try to shut down d4 i usually just play c3 and play it anyway right and sometimes you lose a pawn but it busts everything open and it's you not know, usually it's a pretty good idea so here we go d4 takes takes traded that traded that he took here that's fine get a big trade developing my piece developing Rook over, rook over. And here I saw a nice opportunity and actually misplayed this a little bit. Basically, I'm taking advantage of the pin on this pawn when I move my knight. You guys can probably see the move that I'm going to play next. That's correct. Knight to d5. It's a fork, but it's also, you know, like I said, the pawn is pinned. Okay, so he goes here to defend. And if you would like to pause, what do you think the best move is here? I did not play the best move, by the way. All right, well, if you had a chance to look at that, the best move is knight to b6 because it simply wins the exchange, just like that. The queen has to move, and then I grab the, the rook for the knight, trade, and I'm, I'm happy. Uh, in the game, I was playing quickly. I was kind of in a rhythm, and I was pretty happy with the end game that I was going to get, so I just immediately kind of traded this off. I didn't really think that through. But yeah, knight b6 was technically the better move. But we get this trade, and immediately I can win a pawn, which is great. But on top of that... My rooks are active, right? I have two rooks that are like ready to go. We're attacking here, we're attacking here. Maybe I'm gonna come down here, right? Maybe I'm gonna double up. And black is still trying to get the rooks into the game. So I, I was super happy with my position here. So black plays king g7, defending f6. And I decided, you know what? Let's go ahead and bring in both rooks and do a little fork, because you can only save one pawn, right? Now I do have to be careful, okay? If I were to, for example, take this, I could get back rank checkmated, which is not fun. And also, if I do something like this, I have to be a little careful as well. Same thing could happen if I'm not paying attention, right? So I said, you know what? This is the moment. Uh, I don't want to mess around here. Let me play G3. A safe move that it permanently eliminates the back rank mate possibilities for me. Um, and, you know, I'm happy if they trade. I am still feel like my rook is in a good position. Black pushed. I grabbed the pawn. And then Black's trying to come down and get their rooks on the second. So now that you know how dangerous pigs on the seventh are, you're going to understand the, the next part of this game. I'm thinking about maybe I can get my rooks here, but I'm also thinking 
I don't want to let black get their rooks here and me get into trouble as well, right? So you can see how it works both ways. So I played here thinking that, you know what, maybe we'll trade. Maybe I'll win this pawn. Like, for example, if takes, 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 and he grabs my pawn, I'm just going to do this. And I was pretty happy. I've got the protected pawn. I'm putting pressure here, you know. Black decided to do this. And what do you think he's trying to do? That's exactly right. Come down here. Now, a little bonus tip. Whenever this happens, okay, a lot of times you need to have something defending the, the F pawn where, or wherever your king is at, the pawn that's right kind of in front of your king, because then your king can hide here. It's defended by the rook, and those double rooks can't do anything, okay, because it's defended two times. So this is an important thing that I was thinking through when I chose my next couple of moves, okay? So I played rook F5. I'm like, you know what? I think this rook's going to need to stay here, so let me just go ahead and do that. Maybe I'll even swing over this way and do something like this to where my king is going to be safe and defended, and I can put the pressure on Black's king. That's that's what I was thinking. So he plays here. I captured it. He captures me. I go check. He goes back. Come over. And now, what am I thinking by going here? Well, you already know this, but I'm going to get pigs on the 7th, right? Okay, so he takes me, and I do achieve it, and I did it in such a way that if Black tries to do the same thing to me, I don't really care because look at this. I'm Like I said, I can always put my king here or even just leave it and Everything is defended. The only thing that I have to worry about is this guy right here, which is, uh, you know, a significant problem if I'm not careful. So he pushes. I went ahead and check because I knew I would be able to take the pawn with a, with a free tempo here. Check. And there's this idea in these positions, uh, yeah, where you can always do this. You can go check and then you can go back. I didn't do it right there, but I could have gone back over here and you're threatening checkmate, okay? The problem is that black can always just move the king and you can't really make progress. It would just be repeating back and forth, back and forth. So you have to come up with something different, okay? And so going back to the position in the game where I checked and he went here, I came up with an idea. Now, if you wanna pause for a moment, what do you think my idea was? There's something in this position that I can use to help me. What is it? If you had a chance to look at that, the answer is Harry the H-Pawn. Mr. Harry over here is going to be a key in this game. You're going to see exactly what I'm talking about. So I played check, and there goes Harry. And you might say, but what, what is that doing? Isn't Black's Pawn going to win? Well, watch what happens. Pushes it. Push it. Goes check. I go up. He goes here. And at this point, I'm sure a lot of people are, would start panicking a little bit, right? Like, uh-oh. Black's about to get a queen. He's going to go check. He's going to get the queen. I, I might be in trouble. I might be in trouble, right? But I had a plan. And I calculated it enough that I thought it was going to work. And I was, it turns out that I was right. Here's what my plan was. Check. I just threw this in because I was still thinking a little bit. But check. H6. Now, this is a risky move if you haven't calculated what the point is. But what do you guys think the point is? Why, why am I doing this? Isn't it blocked? Like, what am I trying to do? Can someone tell me that? Well, if you had a chance to look at that, I'm trying to go checkmate. Because normally, before, if I would have tried to go checkmate, he just takes my rook. It's not checkmate. But now that Harry is here, guess what? Harry's the hero. And he can't take that. This is checkmate. So my opponent goes check, gets the queen with check, but guess what? I just played king g2. Just king g2. What are you going to do? How do you stop this if you're black? Can't. The only thing you could do is throw in some random checks if you want to delay the game a little bit. And so, fascinating position. Um, and it shows you the power of the two rooks on the seventh, particularly if you have some support. Right? In the last game, we saw how the knight was the piece that we needed to help support the rooks. Now we see the pawn. Harry, the hero here, is is doing the job. And this is a beautiful checkmate. I mean, this is... And the fact that Black was getting a queen and I could let them get the queen, they still have a free move with their queen and they can't stop the checkmate. I, I don't know. This game, I just felt really proud after playing this. So I wanted to share that with you guys. But at the same time, you know, do a little lesson on the power of the pigs on the seventh. And then the fact that I had back-to-back -back games like this was like the cherry on top. You know what I mean? Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you think about that, and I'll see you next time. Stay sharp, play smart, and take care.